Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Turn your cameras on. We want to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. We're so excited to be here with you. Come on in. I see everybody coming in. So we are in for a very special session today. My name is Justin Michael Williams. Um, I know many of you know me, so I won't be long here about introducing myself, but I'm really passionate about bringing consciousness to bringing what is sometimes unconscious into the conscious, into the world so that we can live better lives and step into the highest versions of ourselves. And today I have a very special guest with me who I have been looking forward to interviewing for so long because this human does so many special things in the world and brings so many gifts. I would like to have everybody who knows, I just, I would, if you know of Lee Harris's work, put some ones in the chat box. Just put a, the number one a whole bunch of times like this in the chat box if you know Lee Harris's work, because you are really in for a special treat today with the gift of the message that Lee brings. And so I'm going to just do the proper introduction uh, of Lee, and then I'll share something a little personal, and then we're going to jump right in. And so Lee Harris is the author of Awaken Your Multidimensional Soul, which is the second book in his Conversations with the Z's series, and Energy Speaks. And he is an intuitive channeler. He leads a huge and vibrant online community that reaches a million people every month. His online events and community portal, sorry if you hear the noise, there's an airplane going over my head, uh, and top 50 spiritual podcast, Impact the World, adventures into the deepest aspects of living and loving and awakening. And Lee is also an accomplished music producer and singer-songwriter whose acclaimed albums have charted as high as number one on the iTunes and Amazon New Age charts. And so that's kind of the professional bio, okay? That's a professional bio. But what I wanna give you all here is something a little bit more special to me. I remember when I got introduced to Lee's work, um, I was blown away by one particular thing that I wanna be super real with you all about. You know, I come across in my inbox, I mean, I don't know, Kate can tell you, like dozens upon dozens every week of the next coach, self-help guru person who is coming forward to proclaim to have something really special to share and something that is supposed to really change our lives, right? And and I'm always open, I'm an open mind, but the, the kind of, <laughs> the meter, right? The bar that I'm always looking at is how deeply steeped does this work feel? Like it's coming truly from a place where the human that is speaking has taken the time and energy to steep themselves authentically in the practices, in the work, such that it is coming through them in the purest form, right? Not just like rinse and repeating some other version of what we're hearing on Instagram or what you're hearing somewhere. And as soon as I was tapped into Lee's work, I was blown away. I was honestly blown away. And so much so that this is the first webinar that we've done this year out with any guest. And so I'm very honored and grateful to bring Lee here to talk about his book, to talk about his work, and most importantly, uh, to help you all step into a greater, more transformed version of yourself. And so as we go through this conversation today, I want to invite uh, all of you to know how to use the chat box and the comments. And so in our community, you've already done it. If you hear me or Lee or anybody else say anything that makes you want to say like, yeah, or amen, or I'm with you, or I got you, or, yes, 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 right, then you just hit the number one a whole bunch of times like this. And this is kind of our like snapping, clapping corner, you know, because the truth is you're not watching a pre-recorded video of us. We're here live. And this is how we will exchange energy. The other way that we'll use the chat box is of course to ask questions, but also if you hear any quotes or golden nuggets that you want to hold on to, just type those quotes in the chat box and we'll have a cascade of all the important topics that we learn in the session. And at the end, a couple of people will have a chance to come in and ask a question to Lee as well. I just have to give you a disclaimer that if you come on camera to, on, to the stage to ask a question, this will be recorded. It will be going up on YouTube. So I want to make sure you know about your privacy before we do that. All right. So without further ado, I want to welcome, a warm welcome. So I want to see your ones in the chat box. Lee Harris, right here to our community for the very first time. Lee, welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And it's lovely to see everybody. I didn't know we were going to get to see everybody on screen. So that's great. Ah, yeah, we like to do it this way here so you can feel the energy of community. And for, for those of you who are here, please turn your cameras on. We want to see a face. We don't care if you're in a, in a hair bun or wherever you are. We want to see you. Thank you. There you are. Hi, Wendy, Brandy, Alexa. Okay, so um, I'm going to jump right in here, Lee. Um, you know, we'll be here together for about another 50 minutes. So we'll, we'll end right at the top of the hour. The title of this book, hmm. Awaken Your Multidimensional Soul. Why? Why this title? Because I know this isn't an accident. Yeah, great question. So the book is, is the second book in a series of conversations between psychotherapist Diana Edwards and my guides who I've been channeling since I was 23, so 24 years now. And your multidimensional awareness, your multidimensional soul, and the fact that we are living on a planet where for many, there is a lot more going on than they are currently perceiving or seeing. In your community, you know, like I've been a spiritual seeker for 31 years now, I'm sure all of us here have always felt there's something more, but Awaken Your Multidimensional Soul was the title that popped out the most from this uh, series of conversations where they're speaking about who we are, what's going on on the planet right now. So this very specific, difficult chapter that we're in this transitionary time. So they're speaking about this decade and everything from now to 2050 and why we're going through it and how we're connected to not just everything here on earth, but our place in the universe. So they really, you know, it's quite broad when I'm channeling, they'll talk a lot in broad terms, but they always bring it back to the human. And they're always saying, you are far more than you realize, or have been trained to allow yourselves to see yourselves as you are multidimensional as a human and as a soul. And depending on where you're focusing on that day, uh, you know, you might not perceive yourself that way. But the thing they have done for me all these years, is whenever I get a little tight in my thoughts or my feelings or my ideas or my beliefs, I speak to them about what I'm tight about and they just show me the, the higher levels and the wider levels and then my whole body relaxes and I'm like, oh yeah, of course. I hadn't, you yeah. know, I needed to relax. So this is really important and, and Z, I was Z, I called you Z, <laughs> Lee. <laughs> so I wanna get into something because everyone here you know, for people who are not clear, right? We're talking about they, and we're talking about the Z's, and we're talking about this, and you're bringing in, and you're hearing them, and you're talking to them. So, can you get clear, like, for just on the most basic level, what are we talking about here? Who is this? Okay. Where is this message coming from? So, when I was 23 years old, I heard a voice in my head and it was explained to me that yes we are your guides and we've been with you your whole life and all humans have a connection to guides whether we hear like them spirit guides or something spirit like this guides, yeah? yes okay yeah um, okay. and in my guide team they've explained you have angelic beings who are here to help you with light and healing you have beings who are helping you with the way that you're navigating things on the planet to do with your mind or your wisdom they they they're a group and they say that most of us are connected to groups in much the same way that we're connected to friends on the planet. So I am highly influenced by my parents, my teachers, my friends, perhaps some of the most challenging people I've met on the planet where I've had like clashes. All of those things have made me who I am today. And so it's no different when we have these connections to guides and other beings. And some of them have been incarnate as human before, and some of them haven't. And they said there are whole souls, beings, energies, groups who won't really choose to incarnate, but they will choose to be consciously close to Earth, part of Earth. So I, I think what was interesting for me is I was a student of personal development. I was a student of intuition. I was into more of the grounded stuff. So the channeling has been a very interesting uh, perception shift for me because it has forced me to accept something that I was previously a little more skeptical of. So yeah. it's good that you asked to qualify this because I should say for, I mean, anyone here who doesn't know what I do, 
I do a range of things. So I work as an intuitive. I work as a more grounded personal development teacher, but I also do the channeling. And this book um, is, is part of my channeled work. Yeah, and what's happening in this book is you're talking to Diana, who is a psychotherapist, and Diana's asking these questions, and you're channeling the answers from these guides Absolutely. who are called disease, right? Who you call disease. Now, before we, we continue on, I want to ask a question that I know I'm thinking, and I'm sure many everybody else is thinking, like, can we all channel? Can other people channel? Or is this just something that's special to specific people or to you, you know, on the planet? I believed it was special to specific people, especially those who maybe were vegan or had meditated for forever <laughs> or yeah. like truly. And that's why I didn't believe it. Like, and also it happened. So this is the most important part of my story. This happened to me on the subway. This happened to me on the London underground, like one of the least <laughs> spiritually open connected places that it. So this was the other trip that it did on my mind. I was first of all thinking, well, I'm not healed enough. I'm not clear enough. I'm not pure enough. So yes, is my answer. I feel like my story illustrates yes, but I think what's tricky because I certainly had this belief. I'm like, well, I'm never going to be someone who speaks to my guides. I'm a huge believer in we can all speak to the voice of our soul and the voice of our higher self. Somebody and type that in. We can all speak to the voice of our soul and the voice of our highest self. Type that into the chat. Go ahead, Lee. So one of the exercises I have given to people for years in workshop rooms and now online, and we can even do it right now if you want, is I will say, uh, write a question at the top of a piece. Oh, let's of do paper. it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's great. do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's great. do it. Let's do it. Can they do it? Can we do it? If, if we're humans who don't have paper around us often, can I do this on my phone? I channel paper? on my phone for myself all the time. Okay, great. Because all then right. I so have a reference of it phone. and it's handy and I can find it. So I use notes on iPhone for okay. my own personal channeling. So great. the question is, what does my soul want to tell me today? What does my soul want to tell me today? And then you just answer it. You write that question. And then when you've written that down, just clear your mind. And that doesn't mean you have to be highly Zen or have no thoughts and just focus on that question and then let yourself write what comes through and don't overthink it. Don't worry if you think you're making it up, just write. What does my soul want to tell me today? and see what message comes for you. <laughs> anybody want to share something with us? Would anybody be willing to share what came to you? You can raise your Zoom hand if you'd like. Okay, Rosie. Hey, Rosie from Yellow Heart Memorial. Hey, Rosie. Okay, what came to you? <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so what came to me um, is um, you have honored her. Um, today is three years exactly that I've lost my mom to COVID. Oh, honey. I have fought for two years um, to honor my mom and all the lives that we've lost to COVID. And that's how I met Justin. <laughs> um, so that's what came to me. Oh, Rosie, I'm so grateful we get to spend this day together. Thank you. What a gift. And honoring your mama. You have honored her. And I Anybody lost else? my dad to COVID in April of 2020. So I, I feel you, Rosie. And yeah, it's a, it's a thing. But I love that message. Hmm. Anybody else want to share? I see Barbie's coming up here. Hi, Barbie. Where are you coming in from, Barbie? Hi, I'm in uh, Western Massachusetts, the Berkshires okay. of Massachusetts. Um, Great. Uh, so what it came to you, dear? My my soul told me um, that I have just I've just been reborn, hmm. which is makes complete sense. I don't have time to tell you everything, but Lee, I just <laughs> heard, Lee, I just heard you with Colette Baron Reed too, and Colette and Justin are my two spiritual leaders. So Fantastic. amazing how worlds close. <laughs> yeah, I love Colette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barbie. Everybody else can type it into the chat. So Lee, is there anything you want to share about that? 
There is. So first of all, I love what we're hearing. And if you give yourself like three to five minutes to do this, you'll be amazed what will fall onto the page. Um, it's a great way to get started. What does my soul want to tell me today? But what I do now, um, because I, I don't need that opening question, I write the date at the top of the paper or at the top of the notes in the iPhone, because then I can go back and reread it a week or two later. And especially if you write a few sentences or a couple of paragraphs, it's interesting to see how those things start to make sense in your life. But I'll write simple questions. So for example, you know, let's say Justin and I were on the phone and Justin was a little evasive with me and I couldn't quite put my finger on why. And then he got off the phone and I was a little worried about him. I would go, what's going on with Justin? And they might say, he is dealing with grief and he is not ready to talk about it. He appreciated the connection with you, but give him space and reach out in a few days. So that level of question and answer is something that I do and it's incredibly useful. One piece to tell you is that when you first start doing this or any kind of channeling, whether it's to your higher self, your soul or guides, it's really important to a, I'm a big believer in if the information is supportive, kind, uplifting, great. If the information is judgy or telling you to do things you're not comfortable with, you haven't quite got to the source you want to go to, that just might be your own mm. mind. And that's yeah. very, very rare. But what is common is that when you first start doing it, you are getting calibrated to the frequency of love and openness that we are not used to living in full time. And we're certainly not used to having it reflected to us in society most of the time. So it can bring up a lot of emotion. And I once was working with a client uh, back when I was still doing one-on-ones and she, uh, she was this brilliant businesswoman, fantastic mind, powerful. And she told me that she thought the channeling wasn't working because I'd been, I, she'd wanted to channel and she was reading me some of what she'd written. I said, well, read me some of it. And she was like, Jill, you're lovely. Jill, you have a very good heart. Jill, she was like, I'm not any, I'm, I'm tough. Da, 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 da. And I said, well, your channel begs to differ. And I said, do you ever speak to yourself that way? And she paused and she went, no. And I said, well, there you go. You've accessed another voice inside yourself. Stay with it. And she yeah. did. And she stayed with it for weeks and she started to slowly let that love in. So often people can get very emotional with the first messages. You know, when you see words that have come through you that tell you nice things or supportive things, it can it can start to drain away the emotion that wraps itself around our self judgment all of the things that we've inherited from our society that we've internalized so know that channeling is it can be very healing for you and it can take a bit of time to calibrate to that and some people it can be a lot of loving messages for a period of time until you've calibrated and then the information might get a little more insightful at that point this is really importantly and i i there's a Part of your book, actually, something that you say that ties so perfectly to this that I love in the introduction. We're just going to read it here. Um, it says, sometimes it is the very act of noticing ourselves that sparks the breakthrough moment we need. Can you tell me more about that particular quote? So I think like many in this field of personal growth and spirituality, I was the textbook person in my 20s uh, to notice a negative pattern in myself and then go, Oh God, I can't believe I'm doing that again. And, and you know, my, my guides were like, uh, uh, they were like, that's a stop sign. They say the minute you start judging yourself for a pattern that you've noticed that you want to improve, imagine a big red stop sign, because that's what you've just put in your way. What you should be doing is going, Oh, great. I am noticing a pattern in me that I have developed enough awareness to notice. It used to be insidious and it used to just run the show and I had no awareness of it. I was just in the behavior, in the thought. But they say, look, you're developing space to distance yourself from believing that that behavior, that thought is all of you. You're now seeing it's part of you. And now you're seeing it's part of you. You can start to give it space, healing, awareness, and different behaviors to let it move out. So they're a huge fan of reminding us that the minute you see yourself 
with your awareness doing something that you think you could do better they say that's a day to celebrate not commiserate yeah you know and I, I love this awareness piece of the puzzle because this is where you know all of our transformation begins and there's you know another section in the book where you talk about disease discussing the importance and i love this so much of listening to our bodies and the reason why this I'm tying this in right now is we just did our session this past Sunday of the kingdom, which is my Sunday session that I host um, once a month. And we had Sonia Renee Taylor, whose mm -hmm. you know book is The Body is Not an Apology. And for those of you who I'll, I'll put the link to that interview in the chat box for you. But she talked about how to love your body and understanding that loving your body, not with like buying things or just taking baths or like trying to work out yourself in a certain way but really being able to tap in like to the wisdom that is here inside of the body is so powerful. And so I, um, the, the piece that I wanted to pull out here, the quote was around how does these discuss the importance of listening to our bodies and discerning whether or not something feels true to us, something feels true in our bodies. How do we know that? Uh -huh. How do we know the difference? Yeah. With so this. there's a little exercise I, I use and I've shared over the years called the body test. So Justin phones me up and says, Lee, I really want you to come out to this party tonight. And my mind goes, oh, I don't really like parties. I'm an introvert. I'm going through a lot. I don't think I want to do it. No, that's not my thing. I think I'm going to stay home. What I should do is the body test. And I should go, okay, body, imagine going to that party. And I just sit for five to 10 seconds and I let my body show me in feeling how I feel going to that party. And now I go, okay, I've, I feel that, that actually felt weirdly open. I felt kind of, yeah, kind of open, a little bit alive, a little bit nervous, but actually a little bit open. Now I'm staying home by myself and I'm saying, no, Justin, sorry, I'm an introvert. And that feels a bit, Oh, actually comparing the two that feels a bit more blah so the body test shows me even though i'm a bit nervous and i don't know who this party is i remind myself you can leave the party go to the party for 10 minutes you can go home but don't do your usual pattern of denying yourself what you what used to be what you needed to do or the way you needed to behave so for me there's a big difference between do i run something only through my mind which has habits and patterns that's trying to keep me safe? Or do I let myself, let my mind be wrong and let my body feel into the energy of what I'm offered and show me which way to go? I do that all the time. And I encourage people who use intuitions or visions to do the same thing because many times, I, I did this a bit myself at the beginning too, but I would meet people who would say, oh, I was told that I needed to take all my money out my bank account and go and open a healing center in Brazil by spirit. And I went, okay. And, and how's it going? Oh, it's awful. I'm bankrupt. And oh, okay. But you felt good about going. Well, no, I felt really nervous actually. And I wasn't sure. Okay. Well then you shouldn't have done it. Like spirit is not in charge. We spirit can give us lovely possibilities and timelines, but if we can't get our body behind it. And so I learned very quickly visions intuitions ideas can this body walk into them right now or does this body need a bit more time maybe it's for the future maybe a version of that in a year or two is going to be true for me but right now i'm a little unsettled i'm a little nervous so even though i'm an intuitive and i work as an intuitive for me everything goes through my body and if my body won't allow it i won't allow it like it has to come from here and when you're saying go through your body and really feel it. I want to get clear here what we're talking about. Like, do you mean you think about whatever the thing is going to the party or opening the retreat center? And if your body is shutting down, getting cramped, being tight, shaking, getting nervous, how do you know the difference between this is just you stretching beyond your comfort zone, yeah. which is not comfortable versus uh, this is a no. <laughs> and, great, you know, and this is a yes. great qualifier because if yeah. you have full on PTSD or a trauma that you're working through, you already know that some of that's in your body. So it's going to be hard for you to know the difference. My line is, is it, is it nervousness or is it terror? If I'm a little nervous about something, then 
I will go, I will notice the nerves, but I'll go, aha, huh, should I just, and then again, if I have my exit strategy, oh, okay, I can leave the party after 10 minutes if I don't like it. Okay, me and my nervousness feel safe enough to go. If I'm in terror, it's a no for me. If I'm, if the fear is so strong, because if my body can't walk me into the thing, or if I'm in a way betraying my body by walking it yeah. into something, it is trying to tell me no, 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 which is why trauma and PTSD are tricky because for, for a while there, when you're working through PTSD or trauma, and especially when it's fresh, or if you haven't yet got someone working with you on it so that you can understand it better, that's like an alarm bell that just keeps going off. So it's very hard to know the difference. So I would say, do the body test and play with it. You know, you're not looking for massive signals. You're not looking for massive joy about going to the party. You're just trying to see where does my body feel open. And that's why I always do a, a two test comparison. It wouldn't really work for me if I didn't give myself another option. But if my other option is, okay, how do you feel if you stay home? It's all about how I compare the two states in my body for me. This is really good. I, you know, one of the ways that I've used this, Lee, is I was learning to feel what a yes feels like in my mm. body versus a no. Is um, I've actually started again. The notes in my phone has been a really good tracker, and a lot of people who've taken my my workshops and things have seen me show this. I have a. I'm not going to show all of it because you'll see too much of my personal life on here. Uh, but I have a little tracker called intuition tracking, and I'm just going to show you guys that I have it here. Or it's true. I typed intuition wrong. Anyway, you get the point. Here it is. Intuition tracking. <laughs> and I have it. And I it's when I'm in this decision points where I'm deciding the first one I have on here was whether or not to go to Philly. This was like a few years ago. And I got this intuitive hit that I needed to go to Philadelphia. And I was like, why am I going to go to Philadelphia? Like, I don't have any reason to go to Philly. Like it was in the middle of a pandemic. And I tapped in and I did this. Here's what going to Philly feels like. Here's what not going to Philly feels like. Okay, now make a choice. And I actually wrote down, here's what the here's what it felt like if I said yes. And I wrote down, I felt this thing in my stomach. I felt a little tight in my chest. And then I went. And then I actually get to refer back and go, was that the right choice? Like, mm -hmm. was that choice a yes? So, because we can't remember, right? Like in the moment, it's so hard to remember. And so I have this whole list of experiences that have actually helped me refine what a yes feels like in my body as I've made choices and sometimes went the wrong, the quote unquote wrong yeah. way, but it wasn't the wrong way because now I learned, oh, okay, next time that happens, it's a no. So I just, you know, I wanted to Beautiful. share that as a really practical way that people can use that, you know, in their journey to, because you have opportunities to train um, and, and harness your intuitions in so many moments throughout the day and throughout your life. And if you can just keep track of it a little bit, I find that it will help, you know, teach you and make it a lot stronger. I love all of that. And, and it illustrates a really important point, which is certainly when I was coming up, I think those of us who were spirituality or intuition students, we believed there was a right way. And mm -hmm. that someone was going to tell us we were getting it right. And what I have learned is it doesn't exist because we're all different. We all sense slightly differently. We all use intuition slightly differently. And also, I love what you're saying about what does a full body yes feel like? And also remembering that a full body yes is going to feel very different at different times in our life. I remember yeah. when I was really one of my, the worst year of my life, really, in 2009. And I was really on the floor. And I knew that for me, joy was probably quite a way away. And I, I got to a place where I thought, I actually just need to get peace. Joy will come mm. maybe in six months or nine months, but what I need to sustain is moments of peace. So for some people, a full body yes might feel like, ah! <laughs> and for other people, a full body yes might just feel like, Yes, that feels less troubling than the other thing. You know what I mean? We're all we're all composed differently and sometimes depending on what we're going through. So that's why I love that your point illustrates we have to study ourselves and you yeah. have to get a bit messy sometimes to figure it out. No one's going to give you the manual. You sometimes have to, you know, do your own driving of your car to go, "Oh, that's how you reverse without smashing into things." Okay, I've got it now. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it next time.
Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that you talk about, I'm just switching just a little bit here, um, is talking about boundaries and what the Z's have to say about boundaries for our own energetic field. Can you talk a little bit about how our boundaries and our own energetic fields and how we're setting that sets us up for our power here on earth? Yeah. I think there's a, there's so much to say about this in the book. And so I think yeah. a lot of people want to know about boundaries. They have been talking about boundaries for 19 years since I started this work. And back then it was a little controversial to talk about boundaries because there were a lot of people going, well, we shouldn't have boundaries. We should be open. And, and, and yeah, that's true. If you've learned your boundaries, like if you are not leaking energy or being invaded by other people's energy or have learned how to own your energy, you can be super open. But if you're super open without having those things in place, it can be chaotic. And yeah. so, you know, boundaries for me, they, they basically said the more, oh God, oh, can I remember the quote? The more you learn your boundaries, the more open your heart can become, mm -hmm. which seems like a paradox, but I can say from my own experience, I was <clears> someone who it was very easy for me to live outside myself in the desires of other people. And for a while, I played that game until I learned the hard way. Ooh, that, that's not good for me or for them, really. But for me, there are costs to that. So then I had to learn, well, what do I want and who am I? And that was never as interesting to me as the outside world and other people. So a boundary is twofold. It's not necessarily just going, no, mother, you can't call me anymore. It's not right. just that, which I think is the kind of raw, you know, the, the blunt boundary we think about. It's literally walking into a shopping mall or a shopping center and going, hmm, this doesn't feel so good. I, my boundary is I'm going home. I'm going to take my energy home because this is permeating me and affecting me. And I'm just noticing it. No, nah, this, this doesn't feel good. So boundaries are really just about owning and containing your energy so that when it's time to open, you can. And also that when someone or an, an experience or a place comes along that you can open into that's going to be good for you, you can do it. But a lot of the time we're either losing energy in tricky relationships or leaking energy or sometimes, and I know this is an issue for some people, um, they feel too boundary. They're like, yeah, I just, I can't connect with people and I feel like I can't reach across and I can't open my heart. And all of us have our areas like that where either we're wounded or we were never shown how to love in a certain way. So we get a little defensive around certain types of people. So I, I think boundaries to me, what they're really talking about is how to be open, not how to be closed. Yeah, I'd see, I love this because boundaries really are deeply about how to be open. And one of my favorite quotes, oh, if I'm going to remember it now, <laughs> I don't remember the quote, but what I will remember about the quote is this, is that when you have clarity about your boundaries, you actually can open wide and relax because you know that you can expand fully inside of those boundaries. Mm -hmm. But when your boundaries are not clear, when you're not clear about your boundaries, you actually don't live fully because you're so busy tiptoeing and deciding is, am I too far in or am I too far out? Or I don't know if I should do this. Or I don't know if I should do that. I don't know if I like this. I don't. And so you spend so much time being hyper vigilant and staying small. And, but if you know, this is my boundary, then you can actually play all the way to the edge of that boundary. You can go all the way to the edge. And that actually allows you to live more fully because you know, your boundaries are strong enough that you're not going to cross over into a place that causes you harm. So true. And so I've, I've found this to be really helpful for my own life. Um, oh, the quote is clear boundaries, no limits, mm. clear boundaries, no limits. Mm. That's what it was. I knew, I knew it would come, <laughs> mm. I love that. you know, Lee, what is, what would you say is the number one, uh, message that you have for us through disease? What is, what is the main message that is coming through for us? Well, nothing comes to my historical mind, but when I open my mind to, uh, when I open my mind to that question in the moment, what I hear for this group and this moment is, um, everything is far bigger than you think. 
And mm. when you remember the size of everything, you no longer feel so tight about your circumstances or experiences. And how I translate that is, I look at our world at the moment, and I think a lot of us are having, you know, shock experiences around what's going on here on the planet in various areas that perhaps previously we felt more relaxed around or we could be open to. And what they're always explaining to me as we go through these times, and they, they said 2017 to 2024 were going to be tough years on the planet. And I, in 2016, that just seemed abstract to me. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. I <laughs> oh, get yeah. That. OK, yeah. But they said they're necessary. They said you will see what they said. You, you might call it the dark energy. You might call it old energy. We would call it control energy. They said you will see it rising but it won't be able to last. And the reason it's rising is because it's, it's in its dying throes on the planet and we can't go forward under that system. So I think where I just have paid attention to what they say and tried to map it onto what I'm seeing when I'm not in moments of reaction to it as a human being, I start to see the point of, of what this time is in a different way. And I feel that there is something much better for all on the other side. Um, but the other side to me is, you know, this next two, three years are really crucial around what will happen on the planet and also what will get dismantled on the planet. And it's very easy for us to go, oh, I can't wait till the old gets dismantled. Personally, <laughs> I don't think it's fun to go through that. And I, I, you know, it, it's actually quite intense. So I think for me, I, I try and stay in my body as much as I can. But the thing they're always reminding me of, they say light is everywhere. And you just have to know where to find it and when to find it. And that is not escaping. That is actually creating light on the planet, because if you can keep connecting yourself to light, you become an energy field that's doing that regularly. And then it gets shared and dispersed. And I think of, you know, those days where we're not having a good day. And it's for me, it's the person at the checkout that I meet who's just an angel or a love or they smile at you in a really big way or the person maybe in an Uber or whatever it is, someone that I don't necessarily know but their energy transmits in a way that I get reconnected in some way. So, you know, to me, that's the point of this time, not so much only getting bogged down in the details of what's going on as we go through this, but instead re remembering this is a transition on earth. It's been prophesized for a very, very long time that this is what we would be going through in different prophecies. It, it's spoken about in different ways. But we always knew this was that moment that we were coming to. So I think their perspective that everything is far bigger than it might look on the surface has helped me a lot to create space and a broader perspective as well as the small and narrow perspective that I might just have as a human being in the way that an article tells me to think about something. What did the Z's have to say about social media? <laughs> They've said it's dual. In fact, no, not even social it's media. It's dual. What they have said about technology and the internet is it's, it's dualistic. So they have said that we would not have the level of consciousness that we have right now without the internet. And like everything, uh, there are areas of the internet that are not so good for us, or there are areas of the internet that are just a not healthy for us, or are used in ways that are not healthy for us. So they're not black and white about it. But the one thing they say is that we wouldn't be as aware of certain things as connected to each other. They say that it has developed more of a hive mind, more of a collective psychic mind. And the biggest thing they say is monitor your use of it. They say, you know, you don't want to be on a computer all day long. They say you need to be in nature. You need to reset your body. You need to be able to come back to your own sensory biological rhythms. And so if you can use computers and the Internet in mindful ways, they're really important tools for the future. 
social yeah, media definitely. i can't remember what they said but i know they said something in one of the books about it and i think they were basically <laughs> yeah they were basically talking about all of the shadow aspects of it that we see but they were also saying it has connect it has developed something among you as well that must be acknowledged that is positive as well as the negative yeah this is super important and there is a lot there. i mean i'm just pulling out some of the big threads you know that i love from the book but there's so much there's so much magic in this conversation inside of the book and before we go into a moment to open up for some questions I actually want to make sure that I put the link to Lee's book here in the chat box. We're also going to have it in the description of wherever you're watching this. And this is it. And I'm going to one right here. Yes, and he's <laughs> holding it up. Conversations with disease. And uh, the link here uh, is directly in the chat for all of you. So you might want to copy and paste it and grab it um, or open it up for yourselves because it's it's really just a treat. And you can feel the truths that are being spoken through this um, in a, in a and opened up in the space of love is very powerful um I Lee, before say, I open, actually the ahead, audible ahead, go ahead, go ahead. yeah the audible version is the actual conversations that took place so it's not re-narrated it's the conversations as diana was asking the questions while i was channeling um i made sure we captured those conversations professionally so that they could be the audio version um, and then the book is a very slightly edited version for the people who want the words in print because it's different you know yeah, and you can you can access all of that uh, at the link here. And I promised also, we'll make sure we put this in the description because I remembered I said it a minute ago and then had to pull it up, that we have the interview uh, from The Kingdom on how to love your body with Sonia Renee Taylor. And mm -hmm. that uh, link, the YouTube link to that is also in the chat and will be in the description as well. So Lee, before I actually, let's just jump into some questions. Is that okay? Sure, you, yeah. Last few minutes. So um, I'm not, I don't, this is the way I roll in this community. You raise your Zoom hand. I don't pick in order and we're not going to get through everybody, right? So um, we'll get through what we can get through and what feels like it's coming through. So if you have a question, uh, please feel free to raise your Zoom hand. You can have a conversation here. Um, and if you have something else that you want to type into the chat and you don't want to come up on screen, I might be able to pull a couple of things off of the chat. So we'll start here with Paula. Hi, Paula. Welcome. Where are you coming in from, dear? Hi there. I'm coming in from Nova Scotia, Canada. Wow. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Just so thrilled to be able to, be able to ask my question because I do have a question. And one of my favorite quotes from Lee recently was, the sound from the ground is uh -huh. run life through me. Oh, say and it again. It's, he, he said, the sound from the ground is running life through me. I love that. Mm. Can you tell me about sound? How can I hear more? How can mm. I open to that sound from the ground that is changing the consciousness on this planet? Mm. That's my Thank you. Wow, that's beautiful. So that's, I, I wrote a song called Boldly, um, which is on an album that we released in December. And my music is very channeled. It always has been. They said that they got me through music first because I started hearing uh, melodies and lyrics at the age of 21. And then I heard them at the age of 23. Sound from the ground is running life through me. It's actually from something that they have been talking about for years. They say that the vibration in the earth is what is waking us up. We often think of out there and above and the heavens and and they said no 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 it's the vibrations from inside the earth so one of the things they've always said and i mean i've seen this as well from other people in different ways they say get down on the ground sit down on the ground put your bum on the ground and let yourself just let the vibrations of the earth move through you and if you're really sensitive you will hear them as well as feel them and it will start a whole other rhythm in your body so that's where that line in that song came from and you know the funny thing about you is you're very angelic and very elemental i can see that just and it's hilarious because you've got like these rings of light going on in your background so to me your uh, elemental energy is uh people who are very in tune with nature with sentient life and can feel perceive and sense elementals i mean if you want to go further into it it's people who can perceive fairy energy, which I know to some people, they go, I don't think fairies exist. I know many people who have connections with the fairy realms and the elementals, and they can see them, they can feel those deva spirits. 
So you have that and you have the angelic. So the more time you spend in nature, just actually consciously, you're the kind of person that could sit on the ground and go, let me feel the sound of the earth. And that, you, you commanding that is going to invoke and invite something. So I would say, um, I would say give permission with your words and, and it will be really interesting to see how that develops for you. Thank you. I will. Thank you. Um, command it to be so, Paula. Thank you so much, Paula. So grateful to have you here. Before we move on, um, Lee, I wanted to ask you if somebody has a question, and the answer to this could be no. If somebody here had a question for the Z's, mm. are you open to channeling something sure. through the Z's totally. right now? If somebody just has a question about totally. their life or something yeah. like this. Okay. So that opens up a door. Y'all have an opportunity here. We have a few minutes. If you have a question for the Z's about your own life or your own experience that you want to ask Lee, um, please feel free or rather ask the Z's, feel free to raise your Zoom hand or just, you know, wave a hand in the chat and we will uh, bring you up. Elka. Hello, Elka. Where are you coming in from, dear? Hi. I am in Pennsylvania and I'm, I'm so honored and happy to be here with you all and Justin and Lee. And, you know, yesterday, recently I had a major break, a breakthrough in my life. And uh, following that, I was with friends outside in nature. And uh, the next uh, time I went into a department store, all of a sudden people came to me and they greeted me and smiled at me and were ever so kind and friendly. And I felt overwhelmed by that energy. So um, I think, is that possible that I conveyed that energy that I absorbed uh, in that natural space with my friends into the world and into that store and people felt attracted? Uh, welcome. A few different elements were playing out at once. So firstly, you have gone through a form of rebirth in the last two to three weeks. It has been very internal and very deep for you. And the way we could illustrate it to you in energetic terms is it is uh, much like a, an inner cavern inside your torso has opened. You have been allowing more heart energy to fill your inner body. So when you amplified this in nature and then uh, walked into what you call the department store, uh, yes, you were emitting an attractive energy to others, but you were not yet in a space where you were ready to mm, interact that energy with strangers or with those whose Mm, intentions were not bad necessarily, but they were hungry for the light and you did not know how to uh, draw your light back in at that point because you were simply open. So we would say to you, for the next mm, 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 at least two weeks, be gentle with your energy and be careful with your energy, not from a place of fear, uh, but to recognize that you have just gone through this heart rebirth inside yourself where a new level of feeling and appreciating has entered your body. And that will take time to settle in and permeate into your life. But what you actually need in the next two weeks is environments and people where your sensitivity does not need to be protected, where your sensitivity is allowed to be vulnerable. So the people you feel safe being vulnerable and open with are good. So are the places. Places or people where that is not so easy you should avoid as much as possible. But in a couple of weeks, this will settle in. This is true for all of you when you go through these growth periods energetically, uh, you forget it's a little like going through uh, psychic surgery. If you were in the hospital trying to recover from uh, something that had gone wrong with your body, everyone would understand and give you space and know that you are what you would call recovering. The same is true when you go through big energetic shifts. And some of you get overwhelmed because you don't always know that that is what is taking place and that you need to be in a mm, quiet, safe and still place so that your body can calibrate to this new level of heart and appreciation that you are letting into your body at a new level. But remember, people are hungry for the light and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not their fault. People are hungry for the light and for positive energy, and that's okay, provided you recognize you don't have to be the feeding tube 
on the day that you do not feel you can be the feeding tube. And then on other days where you feel very robust and generous with that energy, you will enjoy flowing it through you. But yes, don't be too shocked when people flock to the light they see, feel, and need. Good. Hm. Thank you. Mm, take that in, Elka, and everyone. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do a couple more? Of course. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring up Lachelle and the M. Uh, let's see. Oops. Lachelle, I just lost you. Can you raise your Zoom hand one more time, darling? Oh, there you are. There um, you are. Okay. Here you are. Hi. I see can you. you see me? Hi, Lachelle. Hi. Hello. Greetings. I'm wonderful. Um, Where are you coming in from? I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. Okay, cool. cool. So trying to right, move around. Ahead. I'm sorry. I was cooking dinner. Um, it's okay. So I, I want I want to share really quickly my what I heard. I was um, I've been in the process of trying to figure out a move and I've been really stressed out trying to figure the move out. And I heard one, you can be anywhere. And then I heard you can be everywhere. So I love the question. I really appreciate it. It makes all the sense in the world to me. But um, I'm, I'm a healer. I'm intuitive. I do all the things. And my son has his gifting and he's coming into his gifting. And then I know that there are some challenges that come along with the process. Well, he has edema. And so I have the medical question. He's athletic. He's, he's doing all his things. The doctors are completely confused. He has a leg that just swole up on him and it's growing and it's the doctors have no answers. We've been to all the specialists. We're looking to travel out of state to try to find someone that can make some sense of it. He has pitting edema in his leg as though he was 60 years old and he's 13. So I don't know if you have any or any answers. I can't get clarity on that. We will address it from a few angles. But first, a message for you that is separate from your son, although not disconnected, of course, because wherever you go, he goes. A year to two from now. So you are looking at the second half of 2024 and the first half of 2025, you are going to go through a great leap in your life, a very positive leap, a mm, what we would call expansion. So a lot of what is going on in your life right now is putting you in preparation for, for that. And you feel a little anxiety. So yeah. some of the anxiety about the move is not just about the move, uh, which is its own practical event. It is actually that you can feel that your life, your work, your reach, and your connection to others is going to get bigger in about a year's time. And it is perfect. And by the time you get there, you will feel ready for that uh, extra mm, jump that you are about to make. But regarding your son, uh, he is a, we would say, wise healer. Even though his age physically is young, his soul leaning is deep ancient wisdom. Uh, mm. This will take time to show up in him and his Leg is a symptom, not a mm, end result or a mm, final place for him to rest. You will be able to rebalance what is going on in his leg, but it may affect him for the next year or two. It may take that long for it to be resolved. And the journey that you will go on to resolve it will become a part of his future work. It will become a part of his future story. It will become a part of his future teaching. The energetic aspect for him in this is, and you already correctly diagnose this, that a part of him is suddenly becoming an old man, which is mm -hmm. not correct for his age. Uh, but there is an energetic part of him that is letting in the old ancient wisdom. And he is very deep in his heart, but quick to have a temper or anger, which is just his defense mechanism. And it is perfectly fine for him to do that. He is coping with a lot, as are many in his age group, trying to navigate who they are in a rapidly changing world that is losing the flaw that many of you grew up knowing uh, what it was and where it was. So we do not see this condition being permanent for him. We do see this being a condition that it will take a year or up to two years to fully resolve. And the path of healing that you will go on to resolve this will in fact be part of his future in an important way. Mm, but 
we will say that, uh, and you will not be too surprised by this, it will take a great deal of Chinese medicine and alternative medicine to help him with this. So, of course, we never say rule out the traditional medicine route because you have so many different choices to choose from. But because this is an ancient imprint for him, this is not a reaction to a modern issue, which is where we would steer you more to modern medicine as the only solution. Because vibrationally, this has an ancient path in him, it will be more the route of healing that you will go on that will help yield the results that will bring his mm, 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 leg back to its what you might call normal state, but it will in fact be a renewed state. It will involve medical as well. So again, do not rule that out. But the more you can lean into the ancient and the alternative, the more you will be matching the symptom with the vibration from which it was born, which is his ancient self, his past lives. We hope this can bring some help. The two of you have a very bright future. You should not be afraid of your brightness and your brilliance. We are aware that sometimes that has got you in trouble in the past and <laughs> lost you a few friends and loved ones, but that period is over. Uh, you are celebrated as bright and strong and powerful, very electrical in your energy and what you can create as an alchemist. And partly because of what your son is going through, but other forces in your life and in what you see in the world are going to allow you to step forward in a very bold way that you will be feeling as soon as January of 2024, but you will be ready to act upon and activate in the outer world by June of 2023, uh, 2024. Okay. That is when you will start to mm, see the impact of the new you that you have allowed yourself to become. And it will simply be time. You will shed the skin of the old very easily. Good. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so much. This is so accurate. So many confirmations. I appreciate it. Thank you. In peace thank and in you. love to you. Thank you. Same to you. Thank, thank you, Lachelle, for being vulnerable and sharing and big blessings to you and your son. Uh, I'm going to go for one more and then we're going to end. And I know everybody's so excited. Em, I'm bringing you up. Uh, you were one of the first three to to raise your hand. And so I'm going to go with you and everybody else. I'm so sorry, but I'll I'll share more ways that you can work with Lee and the Z's soon. So Em, hello. Where are you coming in from, dear? Hey, I'm coming in from upstate New York. All right. What do you got? Okay. So there's been, I've been going through a pretty significant shift. And um, a lot of it is like surrounding my son in some struggles, but sometimes I have a hard time seeing myself and I don't know always like how to focus more on the right versus the, the expected, like what I should be focusing in on because there, it feels like that there's so much so much all the time to do well. So is this the question? Yeah, just how do I, how do I kind of Good. Sift it through? Well, first you don't do anything well and nor should you try to, ha. Huh. There is no well. Well is all a measure of someone else's opinion. One person's this is very good is another person's I don't like that at all. But we understand, dear one, for with you, mm, you have an imprint that you came in with as a soul that got played out for you very deeply in your childhood. Mm, you know the story of Cinderella, a very well-known archetype on this planet. Well, you were never allowed to be Cinderella, but instead you were shoved into the kitchen at an early age when it came to the needs, wants, and desires of those that you were around when you were young. And that imprint has never fully left you, but it didn't just start in this lifetime. You've had many past lifetimes where it was safer for you to stay quiet than to use your voice and speak your truth. So much of your mm, life you have spent in survival mode when it comes to relationships. And this is very frustrating for you because you are a person who is very magical. You are very aligned with the magical. 
You are aligned with the mystical, you are aligned with the creative. And when you are not in those energies and those elements, you suffer, especially because the relationships around you and the way that you have mm, held or not held your boundary in those over the years means that you are highly permeable to the wills and desires of others and that you are not broadcasting the wills and desire of yourself. So that makes your relationships tricky. And yes, of course, with parenting, it is its own kind of mm, challenge. That is a very challenging relationship. But if you are one who has never fully felt she or he can own themselves, then you often feel in a state of flux and as if the world is ping-ponging you around. And so we are aware we do not have much time here, so there are only so many layers of this we can go into. But what we will say to you is this. The idea of you doing something well is an illusion because your idea of doing something well is fed by all of the ideas that you were fed as a child where you weren't fully seen or celebrated. Of course, there were moments and of course, there were certain people and of course, there were certain things that you did that you felt successful in. But for you, doing something well or quote unquote success is actually the feeling of being present enough to be fully seen. You see, anyone who has a wound of not feeling seen is actually nursing a wound of not being able to be fully present. It is hard for them to maintain their own energy when they are around others. It is hard for them to speak their needs. It is hard for them to be fully honest about what they are feeling or seeing. And by the way, we understand that is a not easy journey to walk through. We are not in any way admonishing everyone who feels that way because we know that can be very painful. The pain you feel when you are in that state is the pain of disconnection disconnection from yourself and thus disconnection from others. Because if you are not fully connected to yourself, you cannot be fully connected to others. It is actually better to uh, what you might call uh, behave badly and then feel bad about the way you behaved than to be too afraid to behave at all. In terms of your connection to yourself. We're not saying that the world would prefer that. Most of the world would not want you to behave badly if you could just be disconnected because that would bother them less. But for you, it is actually more soul crushing to not let yourself behave the way you want to than to, for example, behave in a way that you then slightly regret and make a note to not do next time. So a great thing for you to do would be this. Align yourself more with the magical and the creative and do not expect anyone in your life to align in that with you. Even the people that you might say enjoy those areas with you. Very important for you to find this by yourself because you are a magical force. You haven't fully tapped into that, but there have been moments. But your magic and your creativity are your purpose here on earth. And then secondly, learn to observe those people with whom you feel good and those people with whom you don't. And this is not about making it about them, but start to spend more time with people and in places that you feel good so that you can learn what parts of you are holding you hostage in relationships or in places that you don't really want to be. Is it a belief that you have to be there for this person who is suffering, even though this person treats you very badly? And more importantly, you being there for their suffering does not actually seem to bring them any long term improvements. You're just being asked to dress and redress their wounds over and over again, while you are slowly drained of blood yourself. So it is going to be an important time in your life for you to ask yourself, I am alive right now, and if I knew I was going to die in six months time, what would I really want to experience here on earth? And how can I get all of those people out of my head whose opinions of me or opinions of who or what I should be, how can I get those out of my head so that I can go and discover what I want? So there will be an element of solo journey in this for you. Not that you have to go off to a cave and create by yourself, but you may need to go to creative spaces, workshops, uh, places where you can let your magic come online. 
because one of your soul gifts is magic and creativity. And if you can lean into those more, you will see, as is true for any of you, when you lean into a gift of your purpose, it makes it far easier to start to see the areas in your life that need to vibrationally improve in tandem with this allowance of purposeful energy that comes through you. You then start to look at the relationships, the places, the ways you're spending time that do feel in high contrast to how connected you feel when you are in your purpose. And it helps you clean up the rest of your life, but not because someone forced you down into the kitchen to clean on their behalf, because you're Cinderella and you've decided you want to come home from the ball and have a nice clean house. We hope that some of what we have said can be applicable and usable to you, and we wish you much love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Em. You'll be able to come back and watch that. <laughs> Thank you, Em. Thank you. Lee, mm. are we back with you here? Yeah? Oh. Thank you so much, Lee, for being here and sharing with us and sharing your gift with us and sharing disease with us and this whole experience and for staying a little bit late to show all of us the power of this. Um, if you felt power in this experience tonight, uh, I would love for you to put some ones in the chat box as a thank you to Lee, disease, and this whole community for coming together. Now you see the cascade is coming through. Um, mm -hmm. Lee, we obviously have a link to your book and your work and your website, and all of that is going to be here for everybody who's watching the recording. And everybody here already has it. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off today? No, just thank you, everybody. Thank you, Justin, for, as always, holding such a beautiful space and inviting me and just lovely to meet you all. And, um, you know, we all have our back. We, we all have each other's back. And on the days that we're not feeling it, someone else will lift us up. And that's kind of how it works. So... Um, it was beautiful to be here with all of you tonight and um, sending you all lots of love. Thank you, Lee. As we close out tonight, this is one of the ways we end all of our sessions together, everyone. So please place a hand over the center of your chest, the other hand on top of that. Close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep, full breath in and a deep breath out. And another breath in. Hold it for a moment and a breath out. And if you could think of just one golden nugget for yourself, one key takeaway that you want to make sure you take with you from this conversation today, just one thing, pick one specific thing, what would it be? And just repeat that in your mind a few times to get it into the long-term memory, commit it into the long-term memory. So whatever it is, the golden nugget, repeat the phrase several times in your head. And then open your eyes and write it down for yourself and put it in the chat box. And we will end today with a cascade of golden nuggets in the chat box for all of us. I see you, Lee, we all have each other's backs. Alexa, expand, Barbie, magic is real. Janine, the body test, Barbara, that I am not alone. My spirit guides and angels are always with me. Look at all these coming in. B mm. Daphne, everything is bigger than we think. Rosie, connect to the light. There we go. Lean into the earth vibration, Jill. Mm. Sue, see yourself and maybe they will see you. Light is everywhere, Leslie. So they continue to come in. And this is how we'll end our session today, just typing in these golden nuggets. And the key is, like Lee started with today, as we connect into the light, as you take these golden nuggets for yourself and you start to live them into your own experience, we get to be these beacons out into the world where you get to bring these lessons and bring these teachings to everyone who is not here and will never be here in, in, in these environments and in this moment. And we get to be nodes spreading love out into the world. And with that, I love you all. I'm going to unmute the line. So we'll actually, I'll stop the recording so you don't all have, you know, have your videos on. So hold on one second. Hold on. Bye, everyone. <laughs>